Campbellpin Stars and Strikes is sponsored by McMalkin Chevrolet, Nashua. WNDS Sports presents Campbellpin Stars and Strikes, featuring the best Campbellpin bowlers from all over New England. And now, in our 14th season, your hosts for Campbellpin Stars and Strikes, Dick Lutz and Mike Morris. Hi again, everyone, from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin. It's week two of our new series of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. Last week in our first match, Dave Richards took a 34-pin lead to the third game against Craig Holbrook. Holbrook made a run at him, but Richards survived. Yeah, Craig really let it get away from him. Unfortunately, he had a chance to overtake Dave Richards, who really was in command pretty much for the first two and a half games, but uh, Craig came barreling back with several marks in a row, then a couple of disastrous splits, which uh, turned the momentum back to Dave Richards, who eventually did go on. And this week, he'll be facing Gary Carrington. Let's take a look at uh, Dave Richards. He's our uh, originally our fourth seed bowler who succeeds, or rather, who goes on for week number two to play our third seed uh, bowler, Gary Carrington. Dave Richards out of Plastow with an average of 130 and a high single of 196. Excellent credentials and a bowler for over 30 years. And he'll be taking on Gary Carrington, who's seated number three in our series, which began last week. It should be a very interesting match because these two guys have known each other for many years. They've bowled on this. In fact, they do bowl on the same team right now at Park Place. Gary Carrington coming in with uh, an astronomical 135 average and an identical high single of 196 as well. And he is from Plastow, New Hampshire, and this should be a dandy match. From Lita Lanes in Nashua, week two of Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. We'll be back with our match right after this. There you see the seedings for our renewal of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. Tom Olster, the first seed, Jeff Atkins, Gary Carrington, Dave Richards, and Craig Holbrook. Richards defeating Holbrook last week, 371 to 355. The top five finishers in the Easter Sunday bowling tournament here at Lita Lanes were the qualifiers for our first series on TV50, and the seeds were picked in a draw prior to the first match. And that set up the match last week between Richards and Holbrook. And now we're ready to go with Richards, the winner from last week, taking on third seed Gary Carrington. First bowler is Dave Richards from Plasto. And it doesn't get any easier all the way up the ladder. Jeff Atkins and Tommy Olska waiting to see who they'll be facing. And an eight drop right off the bat for Dave Richards. Good lively crowd on hand here at Lita Lane rooting the bowlers on. And the 10 pin refuses to go. Threw everything at it, including the ball, but everything went over to the left side, leaving the 10 all by itself. And there it remains for a nine box in the first frame. Watch the attempted spare by Dave Richards. Hmm. It hit the side wall, but came out short. Four horsemen right side for Richards. Three seventy one last week. Leaving just the head pin. The object pin. His third game last week was just a hundred, but he had a thirty four pin cushion to work with. A Ten box. And Nineteen through the first two. Gary Carrington. Also from Plasto. Certainly Averages. no stranger to, I'm sorry, Dick, no stranger to this, uh, this series, this program, and to viewers in Boston where he'd been on Channel 5 for 40 times, 20 appearances here on Channel 50. Averaging 135. His first ball a little thin to the right, but the Deadwood continues to maneuver. 135 average, 196 high single, high triple, 480. Rolled a 26.99 in the Easter roll-off, the 20-string tournament held every Sunday here at Lita Lanes, instituted by Peter Simino several years ago and getting bigger and bigger each year. Probably the biggest uh, singles event in terms of prize money with the first prize dick being $5,000. Tough to find that kind of money anywhere in bowling anymore. Missed the head pin. And a nine box for Gary to start out. These gentlemen are teammates, so all the friendship goes aside and the competitive juices begin to flow, although neither bowler yet is showing any, shall we say, flash. Little Lane's owner, Ray Simino, told me last week when we came by to visit that he's been in the business for 
some 40 years, and there's been a resurgence lately in Candleton Bowling, and we'll talk more about that in the weeks ahead, but it's great to hear and great to see that Candleton Bowling seems to be thriving throughout New England. They, they run a wonderful junior program uh, on Saturday morning with several shifts. My daughter was involved in it for many, many years, and uh, uh, Mrs. Belanger does a great job coaching the kids here, Dick. Neither bowler able to mark during our first two boxes. By the way, the triple strike carryover is at $525 from this triple, triple strike contest. Neither bowler able to put three strikes together. They'll be the recipient of a $525 check from Lita Lanes. If they should put four in a row, they'll get another $1,000 on top of that. And there's a $50 check for three marks in a row. Last week, Craig Holbrook put three together twice and won an extra 100 bucks to go with his $100 consolation prize. And there's a nice mark. Beautiful shot. By Dave Richards. Watch it again. Taking advantage of the dead wood. Perfectly spotted between the two pieces of wood. And now filling it with a seven. A couple of pieces of wood uh, in front of the six and the ten. He's going to have to really get them to snap over to the uh, left side to take out the seven. Of course, for those of us who grew up in New England, because he's only able to get one, those of us who grew up in New England and grew up with candlepin bowling and learning to play the deadwood, we know that this is the real bowling. <laughs> a nine box. Now, you know that I'm from Detroit, and you're trying to get an argument out of me uh, because everybody back home says, real bowling. That's 10 pins, isn't it? <laughs> Gary Carrington looking for his first mark. Solid hit, but leaves three standing. Gary's 40 years old, married to Kathleen for 16 years. Two children, Matt, 14, Mike, 8. Matt's an AAU basketball player. 10 box for Gary. And Gary told me the younger son, Mike, takes after the older brother, Matt. And is a very active participant in all sports. We've yeah. seen pins move last week in the match with uh, Dave Richards and Greg Holbrook. We saw pins do everything but fall. What do we do with this one? Nine pin moving off spot. It's about the best you could hope for on that. Leaving the, uh, well, the nine, which is almost on the eight spot, and the ten. Probably just go for the one here. And he'll take an eight box. 36 through four for Gary Carrington and a nine pin lead for Dave Richards through the first four boxes. Dave Richards has been bowling since he was 10 years old. Started out at the Sunlight Lanes in Stoneham. Bowls out of Park Place in Wyndham, as does Gary Carrington right now. Likes to golf and uh, get on the jet ski during the warmer weather. Those days, of course, long past us here. Almost picking up the spare, but leaving the 7-10 split. Old bedposts. And a nine box. 54 at the half for Dave Richards, so the match is, uh, nobody's really taking uh, any kind of initiative to begin the first momentum move. Well, it's better than Dave thought when he turned his back to it, walking away from the uh, pins as he thought he'd thrown a poorer ball than the result indicated. Couldn't get the move, wood to move for him and unable to pick up the spare. Our next taping, by the way, is the 18th of November, a Tuesday morning at Lita Lanes, Route 101 West in Nashua, exit 7W off the Everett Turnpike. We start about 10 o'clock in the morning. If you'd like to join us, we'd love to see you. 63 through 6 for Dave Richards. Gary Carrington looking for his first mark. By the way, we should mention the prize uh, set up for today. Our runner-up will receive $175. And our winner today, who moves on next week, gets $250. Tough first five frames for Gary Carrington. And a nine box. 
But the good news for him is Dave Richards really isn't doing anything other than just one spare between our two bowlers so far. Nine pins separate them at the halfway point. Well, Both of these fellows participate in the world competition that moves back between Canada and Bangor, Maine every year. This year it's up in Halifax, Nova Scotia. There's a nice shot. And the first mark of the game for Gary Carrington as he picks up a tough five pin split. Thanks to the Deadwood to getting the six and the 10 over there on the right side. So that might give him a little spark. That brings us to about even. Dave Richards tries to answer with a seven pin drop. This year, the competition in Halifax, Nova Scotia in November. And a lot of the bowlers you will be seeing on TV 50 in the weeks ahead are members of that U.S. world team. Still waiting for the Deadwood to settle down just to the left of the five pin. Whether he'll use it or not is still in question. I would. He didn't. <laughs> I don't think he meant to go quite that far right, however. And 10 box. By the way, we were speculating as to where Dave Richards' uh, nickname Cookie came from, doing a little uh, research. After last week, uh, nicknamed after G uh, Cookie Gilchrist, the football player. Cookie Gilchrist was about a foot taller and 300 <laughs> pounds heavier. But uh, didn't bowl nearly as well as Dave. A spare in the eighth for yeah. Dave Richards. Gary Carrington working on a spare. Gary works for Lucent Technologies in North Andover, where he's a process engineer. Right through the head pin, and he gets a break as the wood continues to fly a seven pin fill and a spare leave. And it looks like pretty decent wood. Uh, double wood can sometimes be double trouble, but uh, this should should work out for him. He's got it. Yes, indeed. So the bowlers are heating up a little bit. And now Gary Carrington looking for bonus money here with a mark in the eighth frame. He would add $50. Right on the head pin, but a tough leave. Going to need a cut shot to take the two over into the four, and of course the ball will take out the six if he plays it just right. And a nine box. 88 through eight for Gary Carrington. Dave Ooh. Richards working on a spare. Getting a six pin fill to go ahead of Gary Carrington here in the first match in the early going. Just two spares aside for our bowlers. And that's just what he got. Pins fly around the 10 pin. <laughs> Can you say robbery? They went over and around the 10 pin. And a 10 pin drop, 10 bucks. Watch this, watch the pin go up and around it. And then back in front of it. Again. The 10 pin moved two inches and would not fall. And now the Deadwood continues to maneuver and Dave watches it. He's got some playable wood there. If it's it angled does. right, this could be a makeable shot. Nope, didn't go quite far enough. So Dave Richards is at 107 and 109, the first string. Well below his average, which is about 130. 
which is how he started last week. Actually, uh, he started a little under average at 124, but certainly came back with a big 147 in his second strike. Gary Carrington. Waiting for the wood. Trying to wave it in. These bowlers talk to that deadwood, don't they? <laughs> they have a language all of their own, Dick. And it worked. It's still moving, though. It's rolling backward toward us now. You see Gary back away. And now again, it creeps up closer to the pins. And a spare. So Gary Carrington will take a lead into the second game. Our bowler next week, incidentally, is Jeff Atkins of Springfield, Massachusetts. Six pin fill on the spare. Cut it a little too thin, leaving just the five pin. He had the right idea, but uh, just off probably a board or two, if that. What is still moving, waiting for it to finally settle down. Probably won't play a part in this shot, but. No, he's got it right all the way. A 10 box to finish out with a 114 and a five pin lead for Gary Carrington. 114 to 109 for Dave Richards after one at Lita Lanes in Nashua. We'll be right back. Beginning in a few weeks, we're going to give you a chance to participate in our Stars and Strikes telecasts on WNDS-TV with the return of the contest, the uh, bonus ball contest. Send your postcards to Lita Lanes, 340 Amherst Street, Nashua, 03063. Don't forget to include your name, address, and pick a number from 1 to 10, and our winning bowler will bowl a ball after the match, and if your number matches the number of pins knocked down with that ball, you'll be a winner. So send your postcard to Lita Lanes, 340 Amherst Street, Nashua, 03063. The bonus ball contest returns to Stars and Strikes. Gary Carrington with a five-pin lead as we get set for game number two. Carrington, the first to bowl. <laughs> We've seen so many pins wobble. Check the bottoms. Finally went down. 114 to 109 in the first game. He played it perfectly, <laughs> and it still wouldn't go. Need another couple inches on the pin spinning in front of the six, but uh, you're right, it wouldn't go down, didn't touch it. Now waiting for the wood to settle down. And a 10 box to start out for Gary Carrington. Watch this as he plays it perfectly to the left, right off the deadwood, and he did everything but reset the pins. Hmm. Again, a solid seven pin. Defying all physics, everything thrown in that direction. The seven stays. And there's a spare for Gary Carrington. The triple strike carryover is at $525. If either of our bowlers puts a turkey together, haven't heard that term in a long time. Well, we are only a few weeks from Thanksgiving, so it's time to trot out the turkeys, guys, for some big money. Dave Richards. Mm. The five, six, the four, five, six, seven, and the ten. And decent wood. Yeah, decent wood, very playable. No, oh, sure, easy for us to say here, 70 feet away from it, but he can do it. Left side of that front wood, and he's golden. There it is. How did he miss that shot? He doesn't know. I don't know. <laughs> you saw Gary Carrington miss one just a, a moment ago. And now Dave does the same. Ten box to start out. Watch it again and try to figure out how that wood missed that pin. I don't know how one it missed the pin. One in front of it and one behind it, Dick. All around it, but nothing touching it. Oh. 
Have you ever seen so many pins wobble and move but without fall. falling? Right. He's hoping that that piece of wood doesn't go in front of it. It's probably better to take a clean, direct shot at it. I think not. I think I'd play the wood into the front pin because that back wood is sitting on that back pin and it'll it'll take it. Well called, Mr. Lutz. <laughs> Spare follows a 10 box for both bowlers. In our second game with Craig with Gary Carrington taking a five pin lead into the second game. Working on a spare and a seven fill. Gary came in third in the Easter singles this past April here at Lita Lanes. Took home $1,000, which, uh, of course, helped put him into today's uh, bowling match. Forty times on Channel 5 in the old bowling show and 20 times on Channel 50. A ten box. Speaking of uh, the old bowling show, saw Charlie Jutras here at yes. Lido Lanes. He goes back to the early days of the Channel 5 show when Jim Britt was hosting back in the beginning. Yeah, he was the original. Then Don Gillis jumped in, I think, two or three months after the show got underway. <laughs> Taking advantage of the opportunity. Watch it one more time. Nice spare for Carrington. So Two the question marks. is, uh, will we be doing this in still in 40 years, Dick? <laughs> Wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, would it? No, it wouldn't. Richards tries to answer. Well, he's got a makeable situation there. That wood is positioned just at the right angle if he can put the ball there. Will he cap it or will he graze it is the question. Just missed it. Just missed it. Hit it too straight on. And a 10 box. Now he comes up against the spare by Gary Carrington in the fourth frame. Right on the head pin, but a little bit too full and a tough spare leave. Piece of wood isn't really going to help him. Appears to be rolling too far behind the back pin, the four pin. Dave is here by virtue of beating Craig Holbrook last week by a total of 371 to 355 in command of most of the match, but... Uh, That's a good shot. Oh, I thought he had a chance at it. Didn't quite cut it fine enough. And a nine box. 47 through four for Dave Richards. Gary Carrington has 47 plus a ball. And we'll be back to Lita Lanes in Nashua when stars and strikes continue on WNDS. Very close match in progress here at Lita Lanes in Nashua. After four frames of the second game, Gary Carrington has a five pin lead plus a ball to fill a spare as Carrington steps to lane 34. And a half Worcester for a two pin fill. Knew it when he threw it. Dick Lusk with Mike Morin. Happy to have you with us for Candlepin Bowling on WNDS. We'll be with you every Sunday for a long time, we hope. We tape every month at Lita Lanes. Our next taping on the 18th of November, 10 o'clock in the morning. Stop by and join us. And with the bowlers on. Nice crowd for our uh, second show back here in the series. There are some real bowling enthusiasts oh. out there. They were here well in advance of the uh, start of taping today, Dick. Here's a terrific shot by Gary Carrington. 
He needed that one. Watch it again. Hit the head pin right on the nose and got the action. Well done by Carrington. Dave Richards on the Brooklyn side, an eight pin drop. And the 5-10. Very smooth release on that shot, which went a little further left than he would have liked to, but he skip lobbed a couple shots earlier, and that one uh, came off very smoothly. Playing the wood, but not able to get the ricochet. And a 10. You know, we were talking about uh, Jim Britt and Don Gillis, then Ed Harding, of course, on sure. Channel 5. and. Doug Brown and Dan Murphy for 13 years on, on WNDS prior to our beginning last week. I don't know how far back you go, but I remember watching the old 10-pin bowling shows with uh, a fellow who used to call himself Whispering Joe Wilson. And he used to whisper while the bowlers were bowling so that he wouldn't interrupt them or disturb them. Then once the ball left the bowler's hand, the voice would raise and he would and a 10 box. Another very close match. Two 10 boxes for Richards. Carrington working on a spare. Took a five pin lead from the first game. Trying to build on that head pin. And a chop through with a four pin fill. Gives the Gary Carrington a 10 pin lead in the match midway through, just a little bit better. Now. And he picked one right through again. As Mike mentioned, if you're too perfect, it costs you. That's a seven box for Gary Carrington. Neither men approaching their 130 plus averages. Uh, Dave Richards at 130 at Park Place, and Gary Carrington at 135 at Park Place as well. Gary Carrington rolled a 26.99 in the 20 game Easter Sunday roll off here at Lita Lanes. His high was a 161. I'll check it. It was 164 in the second game. He did a 161 in the 19th game. I would think by the 19th game he'd be calling for oxygen. And a nine box. Well, he got $1,000, so the. Uh the perseverance certainly paid off because he did have a couple of big games right at the end, which he needed to vault himself into that kind of money position. 161 in the 19th, and he finished with a 152. His low game was a 101. Dave Richards in that Easter Sunday tournament finished in fifth place with a 2652. And his high was a 158. And his low was a 106. Six and seven remaining. Fill out the box for a nine. He's only had one mark this game. That was a second frame. He's been pinning very well. He's actually only left two pins standing for this entire match. So he needs to put a couple together here. It's a solid shot in the pocket. And a solid 10 pin still stands. That looked to be a perfect 1-3 pocket hit. Most of them do, oddly enough. And Deadwood continues to roll. Now it settles in the middle of the lane. And he'll not make it. That is probably the most difficult right-hand single pin spare for bowlers to make. He goes to the wood this time and missed that, too, Trying. so a nine box. <laughs> Trying something a little different. Still an eight-pin lead for Gary Carrington as we head into the final two frames of game number two. A little thin on the Brooklyn side, but he left himself some dead wood in front of the split. Boy, this is uh, a custom-made shot. The six and seven pins with some wood. Here he is. No doubt about that shot. Well, the wood had it set up nicely, and he played the wood perfectly. That was a room service shot. 
Filling the spare to the right of the head pin. Leaves the four horsemen on the left side. Six pin fill. And another spare. And a chance for some bonus money for Gary Carrington. $50 for three marks in a row. So should he strike on this final ball, as you watch the spare, the four horsemen go tumbling. And this shot worth 50 bucks for Gary, including with the important fill. And it'll be a seven fill. And a first string of 121. Second string of 121 for Gary Carrington to go with his 114. And a two-game total of 235. Now yeah, Dave's going to need a couple of marks here before Gary starts to pull away. With a game lead of 36 and a match lead of 41. He will get the nine-pin drop. And certainly favorable wood. And a spare. He needed that mark in that spot. And he needs another one in this spot. A double strike would, of course, be even better. Right on the head pin. How many times have we seen that combination in the last couple of weeks? We've seen it. Six, seven, ten. Well, he's got an interesting wood situation here now. How do you play this one, Dick? Play the, play red, the, play the red on the red stripe of that wood on the left. He did what I would have done, and it didn't work. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> he just wasn't listening to you, that's all. And a 10 box and a 112. The so nine pins on top of the five that Gary Carrington enjoyed after the first, a 14-point lead for Carrington, 14-pin lead for Carrington after two as we get ready for our third and final game of this match between Dave Richards and Gary Carrington. We'll be back in just a moment. It's a 14-pin lead for Gary Carrington over Dave Richards as we get ready for the third game at Lita Lanes in Nashua with Dave Richards ready to begin. Right on the head pin to start out. And a six-pin drop. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin and our TV50 crew at Lita Lanes in Nashua. Bob Dole, Joel Tupper, and Steve Drouse working the cameras. There's a great attempt at a spare. Will it go? Dave will look at it for a little while longer. Vic Cross is our director. Larry Taylor, Dave McCarthy, and Paul Hunter in the truck. And we're all happy to have you with us for Candlepin Bowling on WNDS TV 50. A 10 box for Dave Richards starting out. The tradition continues. Candlepin Bowling on television in New England every weekend. We're happy to be part of it. We grew up with it. And now it continues on WNDS. There's a solid strike by Richards. No doubt about that one. Solid one three pocket hit and they all went flying. I believe hammer is the word that uh, would best describe that shot. And he's going to need to trot that ball out a few more times in this third match to uh, get a little distance ahead of Gary Carrington. He's still got some distance to make up of course. Gary Carrington with a pocket shot leading off. His third game, he carries a 14-pin lead into the final game. And he answers with a spare. Good way to respond to a mark is with a mark of your own. Thirty years as a bowler, started as most of these guys do, very, very young. in the pocket again. That was a little Brooklyn, but still a good pocket. Here comes a Deadwood. Is it going to have enough momentum? Nope, it's going to go into the channel. Eight pin fill and a spare leave. And he'll take the spare. Two marks in a row to start out for Gary Carrington. Now Dave Richards working on a strike. $525 to one of our bowlers who can put three strikes together on the triple strike carryover. A thousand dollars if they can put four in a row together. Here's Richards on the strike. Missed the head pin. 
six pin drop. That uh, that piece of deadwood uh, leaning against the three and the six can be a real troublemaker on this shot. Right on the head pin and a spare. Wasn't this time. Watch it again as he takes the four horsemen out. Perfectly placed between the one and the two. Missed the head pin again. And a five pin drop. Four horsemen plus one. Plus the nine pin. Right straight through. Two, four, and seven remain to uh, fill out the 10 box, keep his perfect game intact. Yep. Hasn't left the pin standing. Not 55 through four. But it doesn't look like Gary Carrington's going to let up either, so he's got to make all those uh, single pin combination shots as well. So what you do in Detroit as a kid? Try to lift those big balls and, <laughs> and, and put them between your legs and roll it down the lane like that? Is that? Well, it depends on what uh, what bar we'd been at prior to going to the lanes. But it, it is quite a difference, and it was uh, quite a bit of culture shock as I came here in 1984 and turned on Channel 5 that one Saturday in August of 1984 and said, whoa, what is this? But uh, I've fallen in love with the game and uh, enjoy both. Both has its interesting um, idiosyncrasies, I guess. Gary Carrington almost. Seven and ten remain, and some uh, wood over in front of the ten. And that wood can't decide where it wants to settle. He'll take a nine box. And a 43 through three. So Dave Richards has gained back two of the pins he was down. He now trails by 12. Carrington in the pocket again. And they continue to fall. A little protective wood up front, but it should be enough to punch through. And a spare for Gary Carrington. So Gary Carrington with a 14 pin lead coming into the third game has a chance to increase that as he works on a mark. As we will continue from the Lido Lanes in Nashville with Candlepin Stars and Strikes on Channel 50. Dave Richards is about to bowl in the fifth frame of the third game. Dave trailed by 14 pins coming in. He has 55 through four. Gary Carrington with 53 plus a ball through four. As Dave Richards hits the head pin and takes a five pin drop. Hoping the nine pin would fall, but it didn't. So he's got the double wood behind the three in addition to the other pins. Tough shot with that sleeper pin behind. And a nine box for Dave Richards. Dave advanced last week, beating Craig Holbrook in the opening match of our series. 371 to 355. Well, a now, similar shot that, uh, that he had a frame ago, but uh, all the pins begun to fall that all stood up last time kind of a mirror shot on the opposite side and he'll try to assess the deadwood as it surrounds that's a terrific shot and he just couldn't get it to go he had the pin scattering every which way but at the 10 and a 10 box Now Gary Carrington will step up, working on a spare, trying to increase his lead in the match. 
Today's winner will go on to face Jeff Atkins next week. And, uh, Dick, he was the first prize winner in the Easter Sunday Classic back in April for $5,000. So he does like Lita Lane. That's quite a way to, to celebrate say. Easter, isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> Certainly worth the driving from Springfield, for sure. Missed the spear by missing the head pin. He knew it as soon as it left his hand. And a 10 box, a six pin lead in the match, tw a six pin lead in the game, a 20 pin lead in the match. So it'll come down to the last two frames. It always seems to when they're this close together. Six and the ten. No obstructions. Straight, easy shot. And he'll take it the hard way around the back door with a spare. Padding his lead just a little bit. These guys are teammates at the Park Place Lanes in Wyndham. Good friends, but fierce competitors when the money's on the line. Gary Carrington's been a member of the world team that uh, plays in the world competition with Canada since its inception a dozen years ago, the competition in Halifax this year. And as it stands right now, Gary won't be able to make it this year for the first time unless his schedule is changed to accommodate that tournament. It does not appear as though it'll happen as it's a nine box for Dave Richards. I'm sure he's very disappointed about that because uh, I think we spoke earlier, it's the kind of tournament where you get a lot of uh, professional bowlers who don't get to see each other in that kind of a setting. And it's, it's a good time socially, and it's a very competitive bowling situation as well. To these guys, it's their Super Bowl, yeah. World Series, Stanley Cup, whatever you want to call it. It's the ultimate in competition. Is that pin going to go or not? Being held up by another pin behind it. The crowd tried to root it over, but it wouldn't go. Dave giving it all the body English he possibly can. And a 10 box. One thing I learned in my preparation for the program and talking to the bowlers is how much they like each other, how well they know each other, they travel the circuit together, they see each other all the time, and You're right. they it's all a, get along so well. It's a very small community, really, when you think about it. There aren't that many professional candlepin bowlers, so it's in their best interest to all be friends and cooperate. Here's another case of a pin moving about three inches and not falling. Gary Carrington with a nine-pin fill. Looking for his fifth mark of the game. He's got it. Slowly pulling away from Dave Richards, who hasn't had a mark now since his strike spare combination in the second and third frames of this game. Now a chance for bonus money for Gary Carrington. And there it is. Strike on top of a spare. $50 in bonus money, and you watch it again. Just about closing the door on Dave Richards with two boxes to go. Dave would need a miraculous finish. Again, he's right on the head pin, but punching through and not far enough either to the right or to the left, but going right up the middle, you leave those split combinations. And he tried. He gave it a chance. And a nine box for Dave Richards. And unless my math, well, here's Dave Richards with a nine pin drop, trying to stay alive. He's got a mark. He'll throw one more ball. Possible 122 for Dave. One. This match is over. Yeah, it's not going to be enough.
five pin drop and a 117 for Dave Richards and a 338 triple. Well, let's go for some more bonus money. What do you say? And that's what he's shooting for right here. And he has two in a row. That's an extra $20 in bonus money right there. So he's got $70. And this is a shot for $525 right here. As you watch Gary Carrington. Right on the Brooklyn side, solid strike. Now a chance for $525 for Gary Carrington. On the head pin. There it is. And the big standing O for Gary Carrington, who's just earned himself a nifty $525 just on the uh, triple strike, in addition to the other bonus money that uh, Dick told us about here just a moment ago. Now a chance for $1,000. For That's right, for the four-bagger. A four-bagger's worth wow. a grand. This is a $1,000 shot right here for Gary. Missed the head pin. get the spare there a 182 game thanks to the strength of a triple strike and a whole lot of money in his pocket 417 to 338 Gary Carrington advances by beating Dave Richards here this afternoon we'll be back to talk to our bowlers right after this